advantage at that size around the rim. And then Ty Jones, of course, for Texas, runs as fast as anyone in the country from end to end and also blocks shots. Jericho Sims wins the opening tip against M.A. Moncrief as Oklahoma State switching up their starting five, going with Moncrief and Avery Anderson for the first time this season as they try to match up with the athleticism of this Texas team. And they'll need Moncrief's bulk and length. This Texas team has caused a lot of people problems. Nice move by so Jones. And Cunningham, you'll see him bringing it up a lot. He's in zero with the ball in his hands right now. Two-point guard system for Oklahoma State with Cunningham and Likely. And they've got the physicality edge when it comes to the backcourt. Texas has that edge in the front court. And a three ball rattled home by Keelan Boone, the sophomore from Tulsa. Boone, one of the twins and the one who plays on the perimeter. He has been a stable force for Oklahoma State. They are trying to get his brother going, who offers them a lot around the basket, especially when they can throw it to him. Caleb Boone. The twin brother, more of the bruiser, will see him doing most of the work in the post. And there is Mike Boynton Jr., fourth season as the head coach of this Oklahoma State team, built for this, an outstanding recruiting class. And we will see all those star freshmen playing today with this Oklahoma State team. Still feels good about the way they responded after a heartbreaking one-point loss in their conference opener against TCU. Here is Greg Brown. This is what he likes to do. It's that early heat check three, if you will. Brown gets it back, steps out of bounds, OSU basketball. Shaka Smart, meanwhile, helped his team take down Sam Houston State, 79-63. 27-point lead at one point in the second half. Here is Cunningham bringing it up. Ramey gets the first crack at him. As Matt Coleman gets in, trying to wrestle it free. Here is Cunningham inside the paint. No, Sims with the rebound. That started because of Ramey's pressure on Cunningham, not allowing him to get into any kind of realistic possession on the offensive end. Play pass. Turnover. Andrew Jones scrapping. Scrum for the basketball. And jump ball. Well, if you're coach smart, you have to like the way Ramey has started on Cunningham. That's going to be a key matchup today. He's obviously not going to space him and give him the opportunity to size up the defense. There you see the two <laughs> ooh, doing a little early hand checking. And you know Ramey is fired up for this matchup. Coleman with the steal. Jones to Greg Brown in the face of the other freshman, Kate Cunningham. Message sent by Greg Brown. Well, that's what Greg Brown likes to do, attack the rim. You've got to keep a body and a big body at that between he and the basket because he's so strong and powerful going to the basket. Earlier I said Cunningham wearing zero. It's Avery Anderson with the ball now wearing zero. Cunningham wearing two, of course. Here is Cunningham, long three, too strong. Greg Brown with the rebound. Ramey working baseline, tough inside. And Oklahoma State wins that possession. Some contact there with Coleman. Here's Likely, and Likely is called for the travel. Well, the early part of this game, there are a lot of nerves. I see some long shots, missed shots, some travels. But Texas has to get out and run so they can use that length and athletic ability. No one picking up the wings. you got to stop the ball and then find these wings for Texas because they are long and they can finish at the rim. Jones, a little step back against Keelan Boone, and Jones is on the board. Jones has really been up and down here early for Texas this season. Hasn't quite gotten to a rhythm. He and Sims, Texas will need today. Cunningham loses the rock, and Texas 
is making Cunningham work for everything early on. Yeah, and it looks like Cunningham's trying to do a little bit much here. He wants to get into the flow of the game. But let's not forget, this is a Texas kid. He's coming home on a stage. He's been watching Texas all his life. And so to come home and play on this stage first game, I'm sure there are some butterflies with him wanting to prove and show how good of a player he is. He's such an elite talent and such a great young man in terms of the way he approaches the game. The coaching staff loves how selfless he is. So this is not typical Cunningham basketball early on. For an uber recruit, you think you'd want to dominate the ball. He is best known for sharing it with teammates. Here's Kai Jones for three. Leaves it short. Likely wants to run. Big physical guard. And Andrew Jones will try to check him. Likely using that power inside, and that is a mismatch. Yeah, you almost have to guard Likely like a big because he's so good from about 15 feet and in. He's able to create space with his strength and his girth. Jones, mid-range, no. Here is Anderson. Nice lay-in. And Oklahoma State extends the lead 7-4. So Oklahoma State attacking the paint early on at 50 points in the paint in the loss against TCU. Yeah, and also Oklahoma State's going to force Texas to try to make some shots. They're in this zone, this 2-3 zone, which, ex which is extended. Looking for the loss of Kai Jones and a whistle before that went down. Entertaining start here. The athletes, the NBA talent on this play. It's OSU 7-4. College basketball on Longhorn Network is presented by Coors Light, official sponsor of the Texas Longhorns, and in part by St. David's Healthcare. The best is here. Vince Young's house. This is our house. That other team, not their house. This is the best house. The best is here. Let's bring down Longhorn took Hollywood by storm. He transformed himself for the film Dallas Buyers Club and won his first Oscar in 2014. I got a prize for excellence, something that's not my hobby, it's my career. That feels wonderful. With more than 50 credits to his name, dozens of awards, a heart for charity, and an undying devotion to his university, Matthew McConaughey. He's a Longhorn legend. Welcome back to a cool Austin where Kay Cunningham for OSU is under a lot of heat. And this is why. Look at Ramey. No space. Not allowing him to survey the defense. Look at the swarming defense. You help and get back a hand in his face. And then, of course, coming off the screen one way. And Sims jumps out high, can't turn the corner. Look at the feet movement there by Coleman, another helper. Boy, this is great defense law for this Texas team. And in the collective, in terms of the whole group, to, in my opinion, this is what they do best. They really defend in a swarming and aggressive way. Offensive foul on Jericho Sims trying to body up in a bomb creep there. But the supporting cast, that's what is what has been the difference so far. While Cunningham has not hit a bucket, Anderson, Likely, and Boone all perfect from the field. You expect a lot of looks, a lot of different guys against Cunningham this afternoon? Yeah, well, I think it'll go by how good a job Ramey does. I mean, if he keeps him under wraps, which he's doing so far, I think they'll be okay. As I say that, they switched on the backside, and it looks like Jones is taking it. Sims with the rejection. That's that length and athleticism. 
Texas will have that edge in the front court. Mike Boynton was talking about the athleticism of this Texas team. Talked about it this week saying, look, I think we're a really athletic team as Ramey misses the three. But if you lined up every player on both rosters and you pick guys just based on pure athleticism, our most athletic guy, which is probably that one right there, Kate Cunningham, is not selected until maybe fifth or sixth. Yeah, I agree with that statement. I mean, Texas, Texas's athletes are just at a whole nother level. Jones, and I sidestep in for the gentle flush. And Kai Jones talked a lot about Greg Brown, but Jones is a guy that's climbing up NBA draft boards. Yeah, and Jones would be extremely high of the group of guys that we're going to see today on my list. I mean, he runs as well as anyone in the NBA, and he can do that. Look at that. He gets the block, and then look who's the first guy down the floor. He loves to run. Yes, he does. Coleman for three. Rattles out. Coleman has not shot the ball as much over the past two games. With Greg Brown having an increase in shots. Keelan Boone, no. And Moncrief almost makes a spectacular follow. Here Sims inside. Cunningham showing some of that size and versatility. As he switches on Jones. Good position. And it was trying to find a cutting high Jones. And throws it away. Yeah, I don't like that by Sims. And Kai Jones, he does so well without the ball. Here he has a nice drive. Look at him split the defense. That wasn't great defense at all, but the offense was better. And then, of course, on the defensive end, this again is why Kai Jones would be high on my board. You don't see it there, but he also beat everyone down the floor in the NBA. That's a likely dunk at the other end simply because of teammates and point guard's ability to put it on a dime in terms of the pass. Second chance opportunity. Another freshman off the bench and Rondell Walker. Cutting game is called for the travel. As this game goes on for Oklahoma State, the supporting cast will have to take on a bigger role and do something that they're probably not as comfortable with, which is score a lot. How did Coleman thread the needle there? Found Brown, and Brown is fouled by Caleb Boone. And Texas, they share the ball so much that if you cut, and you cut hard, you're going to receive the ball. Brown shooting 76% from the free throw line. We heard from Keelan Boone this week leading up to the matchup. Guy that was anticipated to do most of the defense against Greg Brown. And he said his goal, his focus was to make Brown shoot those outside shots, especially the three-point shots. They don't really have a problem with that. They don't want him making those aggressive cuts to the basket. Yeah, because those aggressive cuts are layups and dunks. And the percentages change, but of late, Brown has gotten a little more comfortable from the perimeter. And when he's knocking down shots, he's almost unguardable at this level. Top finish for Rondell Walker. Excuse me, Avery Anderson with the finish there. Wow, to say the least, the sophomore making the first start of this season. A nice move to find himself in the paint and to finish. And Anderson has a chance for a three-point play when we return. Now that was the perfect last bite. What made it so perfect? Let's back up. There's crispy bacon and two melty cheeses on top of the two all-beef patties. Yes. And then there's the clincher, the smooth roasted heat of all those grilled hatch green chilies. The new limited time hatch green chili bacon burger. Perfect. Right down to the first bite. Good thing there's Whataburger. 2020 has been the year of the unthinkable. And millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table. So Wells Fargo is helping our neighbors feed their loved ones. Using some of our locations as drive up food banks. And helping provide 50 million meals for Americans in need. The unthinkable has happened. Now it's time to rethink how to make a difference. 
Wells Fargo. Watching Longhorn Network, hook them horns. Welcome back to Austin, where OSU is getting it done, namely because of this young man here. Anderson splits the defense, takes the hip. Oh, it might have gotten away with a little travel. The right foot there hit the ground as the ball was still in the in the right hand, but Lowell, when you play hard and aggressive, sometimes that happens. That was just, that would have been a tough call there for the official. Anderson cannot convert on the three-point play. And what's happening now is that Mike Boyton wants to go with more athleticism. And the athleticism so far of Oklahoma State is winning the early stages of this game. They're attacking the hoop. Now eight of the 11 points for the Cowboys inside the paint. Well, and the game becomes different without Cunningham on the floor. That's the shot that Oklahoma State is okay with from Greg Brown. Where are you with the Greg Brown outside shot, the frequency of it? Well, it's it's what he what he does, so you're not going to take that away as a coach. I'm okay with it as long as it's a good shot and not a premeditated shot. And eventually he will start making those shots because he has the capability, uh, the ability to do it. 14 total three-point attempts in the previous two games. That is what Greg Brown can really do. Get to the hoop. Misses twice, third time. No. Brock Cunningham, of course he's there to get the offensive rebound. That is what he does. Coleman, pull up, and he's fouled. So a frenetic possession there from Texas. Had the opportunities under the bucket, but it's Brock Cunningham who keeps that whole sequence alive. Well, Brock Cunningham and Ham have been extremely good this year in terms of creating more offense, 50-50 balls, just doing the little things, the dirty work. I think they're part of the impetus of why this Texas team has started so well. And they were a huge part of their success low last year. Texas had the big run late in the season. It's a function of those two guys, Cunningham and Ham, stepping up when Texas's back was against the wall. And Shaka Smart made it pretty clear to his guys at the beginning of this season that we've got six that we consider starters. The three forwards, the three guards. And then after that, you've got to do something to find your role to earn playing time. It can't just be the seventh best dude. It has to be the next guy that's willing to have a role. And will that count? Caleb Boone inside and it does an and one for the other part of the Boone twins. Yeah, and this Boone twin is the one who gets it done around the basket. That was just poor defense by Texas. And also, if you're going to make that foul, if you're cutting him, you certainly don't want him to get the ball up above his shoulders. And this Boone here has had his struggles of late. And the Oklahoma state staff has been trying to get him going much like texas is trying to get sims going with what he can do they feel like they both coaches feel like they can get more out of their big sims and boom to that's cunningham and that is a charge on greg brown yeah, it's about pushing the right buttons, right? We've seen, even though Caleb Boone started the first five games of the season, Bernard Kuma 
started the previous two. A little bit of a message to Caleb Boone that needs to pick it up. And when he's right mentally, he's dominant. Of the Boone twins, he had the better of the freshman season. But it's been Keelan that's been more of the X Factor so far for Oklahoma State. And whenever you're a guard dominant team, I played with one in the NBA and Isaiah Thomas and, and Joe Dumars. You want to have some kind of presence inside. Greg Brown is trying to send that one to the seats. But Bryce Williams draws the foul. But back to that point, when you, you know, you've got Likely and you've got Cunningham, you've got these premier guards on your team, and when you have a guy you can throw the ball to who can get you a little bit of offense and control the pace, it's a huge advantage. And it opens things up for your guards. That's the kind of thing that they'd like to get on a consistent basis from Boone. And Texas for Sims. Brock Cunningham picks up foul number two. He'll make his way to the bench or to his individual seat. As all the Texas players have individual stations over there. Nice little setup. See some coolers over there. Some equipment racks. How about it? 15 to 9, Oklahoma State lead. Jones for three. Kai Jones with the rebound. And he's fouled. So halfway through the first half here, and it's apparent that one team wants to attack, and one team is more content to shoot that outside shot, and that team being Texas, 0 for 6 from three-point range. Well, part of that, too, is the way that Texas is being guarded versus the way that Oklahoma State is being guarded. Contact there. Count the bucket, Andrew Jones. AJ1 got the body into it and dropped it. Against Farron Flavors. Yeah, Jones has struggled a little bit from the perimeter, but he's, as he's gotten stronger, he's gotten much better off of the dribble. And that was a little bit of a vet move. He does a little hesitation. Well, he is a vet. He's, he's 23 now. We brought in that birthday <laughs> together last week. And Andrew Jones makes it a three point game. He's getting healthy, right? He had the offseason uh, hip surgery. It's all part of the process of him getting his back to as close to 100% physically as he can. Cunningham too strong on the three. Here comes Jones against Cunningham. Nice move. But Bryce Williams, the defensive stalwart, was there. And that's what Bryce Williams does. He embraces his role, being the defensive do-it-all guy. Yeah, and Texas has done a really good job, speaking of defense, of keeping Kay Cunningham extremely quiet. You see... OSU has moved him off the ball. They move him around they, they, all over the court to score. Quick passes here to Craig Brown. Open corner three. And he can't do that, as you said. He's got six points. And that was his zone there. Does OSU go back to it when they come back on defense? Here you see Cade again is off of the ball and now he's a receiver almost like a point forward. Working on Coleman, it's short. Tied up at 15. Jones for three. No. Greg Brown, the rebound. And called for the foul, a little hook action. Yeah, I think the right arm got loose. Sometimes Brown tends to let that right arm flail and I think he did it in that case and tried to create a little space is that Boone I can't see from up here I think that was there it's his rebound oh that's yeah, a hook Bryce Williams yeah he he hooked him right call yep right call Two right. fouls now on Greg Brown, so he's on the bench. That's a right call. Brock Cunningham, two fouls, and so now Kamaka Hepo playing in his third straight game. Flavors, no. And Oklahoma State fighting to keep that one alive with Texas basketball. So Farron Flavors, we remember that name. We saw him play yep. here for Cal Baptist. Dropped 14 points on the Longhorns last season, going 2-7 from three-point range. Grad transfer for this Oklahoma State team.
And it started every game up until this one because that outside shot just has not been falling for him. Now stepping up into the Big 12. Yeah, he to me is the Febris, if you will, of Oklahoma State in that he can really shoot the long ball. It's just the percentage does not match his ability to shoot it. This year only 26% from distance and no surprise on the change because that's an element that this team needs. Only shooting 30% from beyond the arc, Lowell. That's just not going to cut it against the Texas ball club. That is at 43% for the Lancers last season. Good inbound. Jones did not get enough on it. Oklahoma State wants to run. Into the paint and the finish in transition by Bryce Williams. Yep, that's huge because Bryce is more of a do-it-all guy. Anything they can get from him offensively is huge. Makes Texas pay for not stopping the ball. Ty Jones, is the bank open? <laughs> Do we have any open on a Sunday? I think Kai has been extremely disciplined this year, only taking those three balls when needed, necessary, or, or they're given. Sometimes luck needed in this game. But got himself open with that fake pass. Ramey goes straight up. That's a miss by Caleb Boone. Jones collects himself. Fires for three. Hits for three. And Texas extending the lead at 21-17. The spark they were looking for. Yes, it is. This Texas team is explosive, and OSU knows that it starts with a bank three, and these things can be contagious. Low. Guess what? Wow. Jones and Jones, Texas, hot. My baby wants Bevo for Christmas. She wants nothing less, nothing more. My baby wants Bevo for Christmas. All wrapped in a bow that's burned on. Prepared meals made by chefs and nutritionists, fully cooked and ready to eat in three minutes. Mm. Wow, that's good. We don't have to cook anymore. We don't have to cook anymore? We don't have to cook anymore! <laughs> you don't have to cook anymore with Freshly. Now you can get nutritious, delicious meals delivered right to your door. Go to Freshly.com today. It's here. The moment that will define you. So think of this moment as your moment. The one you've been waiting for. You were built for it. And so were we. WGU, the online university where ambition never rests. Quarantine and coming out of quarantine, we've been feeling pretty weird. Normal? What even is normal right now? We have the opportunity to define a new normal. I wrote Weirdos to say that there is no normal anymore. Talk to someone and start the conversation. Andrew Jones with eight points to lead the way for the Longhorns. Greg Brown following with six. Kai Jones with five. Everybody else two points. And yet to hit a shot unless your last name is Jones or Brown. And Texas has weathered an early onslaught by Oklahoma State. Now the three-point shot is falling. They have a 21-17 lead over Oklahoma State. What is the Big 12 opener for the Texas Longhorns, Oklahoma State 0-1 to start conference play. Cunningham inside. He got hit, made the bucket, chance for a three-point play. Size, strength, athleticism on display. Yeah, I talked about it earlier, Low, about him scoring at multiple levels. Here you see he receives the ball in the corner. The nice lefty jump hook. That in that case uses his length to shoot the ball over both Hepa and Ramey. 
Kate Cunningham strikes me as the quiet superstar. It's not like there is that one thing that just immediately jumps out, other than his size, but he's so in control. He's so composed with the way he plays the game. Yeah, and looking at this, I'll put on my NBA lens for a moment, the, the thing that I like the most about this young player is really his basketball IQ. Andrew Jones clean it up for two more. Yeah, you gotta like his understanding of the game. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that was not Kamaka Hepa's greatest defensive effort. No, and, and when Hepa is isolated like that, it's not a fair fight. So he's typically got to get help. That's a tough guard for him against anybody. Ramey, short. Back to your point, though, on Cunningham. Well, Cunningham, he just knows how to play. His decision-making is exceptional. Typically doesn't force things. If anything, you would hope at some time, sometimes that he's a little more aggressive. Oh, missed everything there. And almost a nice play by Likely to keep it alive. Well, just a nice feed and a... No help. Likely has got to find him. Texas's guys are so aggressive when it comes to scoring and or rebounding the ball. You've got to put a body on them and keep them off the board. To stay with Texas. And Andrew Jones had a slow start to the season. Just trying to get right. It appears like he's on the right trajectory as Donovan Williams now checks in. Yeah, you got so many guys for Texas. And I, I don't know if this is the case. I have not talk to Jones but I mean he's getting closer to his senior season these guys hope to be in the NBA Jones was a McDonald's uh, All-American and so these guys sometimes put undue pressure on themselves to get it all in one game Coleman lost the handle like he was trying to set up a lob and here's Cunningham Coleman called for the foul on the Bryce Williams drive. Yeah, I really like Bryce Williams because he takes what's given to him. And then Coleman, of course, I think I thought Sims was open for a nice look there under the basket. Like he predetermined he was going to go try to finish. But this young man, Williams, it, you talked about the presser and, and what some of the guys said after the TCU loss. And this young man here, Williams talked about how good he felt like this team was and saying, hey, we felt like we beat ourselves against TCU. Not only that, he said, we can beat anyone in this league. And so that kind of mentality, you got to be excited about if you're a coach for, for OSU. And Oklahoma State had an eight-point lead with 2.20 left, but did not close. And what he said afterwards, this league is unforgiving. No one's going to give it to you. You have to put teams away. Yeah, TCU went on a 9-0 run to, to win that game with Nimhart finishing them all. That big shot at the end of the game for TCU. Cunningham had a look. Was not a great look at the buzzer. No, I, and, and, and that's more when we talk Oklahoma State. People are asking about how they are holding up after that loss because of the way they started off Big 12 play last season. They had an awful start. They were nine and three going into the conference, and then an 0 and eight start in Big 12 play. But like Texas. They really picked it up down the stretch. That's why it's been a talking point. Well, and the TCU team that they lost to is a very good ball club. I mean, Jamie Dixon has done a great job. He's got three great guards in Miles and Nimhard and Fuller. They're going to be a tough team in this conference. So Oklahoma State losing that game is... Is is not a tick against them and then also Lowell these are different home games you know, Even though they lost that game You know at home it's different because of the crowd in the situation So that was Cunningham going down Collision with Donovan Williams. So Williams has called for the foul Oklahoma State in the bonus So he's got free throws, but they will take a look at this Probably looking at the contact here with Williams and Cunningham. We'll take a moment and 
will check out what they're looking at. Left hand part of your screen. You see that Williams goes down and yeah, that's a play on. He simply one guy fell and pushed the other guy over. Donovan Williams there. He, yeah, he just fell. A foul, but nothing malicious. No, and you know, not a lot of the cell, but maybe even a little bit of a cell by Cunningham, but certainly he was foul, so. So the officials continuing to take a look at that contact. Yeah, and 52 left to go here in the first half of the Big 12 opener for Texas. Tied up at 23. And low, a, a timeout ago, Texas was up, I think it was 21 17. Uh, there was one timeout, and then now you have stoppage. This stoppage of play essentially can stop momentum. And that's what it looks like is happening in, in the case of Texas. So they've got to figure out a way to generate the type of momentum that they had three or four minutes ago. So they may have been looking at something else. There was an explanation given to Mike Boynton, and he did not seem to agree. We are no longer courtside because of COVID protocols. Typically in a situation like this, one of the officials would come over to us and explain what they were looking at specifically and what the ruling was. Cunningham misses. What a good cleanup there by Keelan Boone. With our distance now being up in one of the suites, we do not have that communication with the officials. So looking now at the, the right side of the screen with the big, oh, so there it is. It's the elbow by Ramey right there to the face of Avery Anderson. Cunningham now has three fouls. Good catch. That's a, that was a good catch. Hello. Hey, hey, hello again. Boy, that's some, happy holidays. That's everybody. some great work. Yeah, we're a little ways away. <laughs> Not complaining at all. I mean, it's a great spot. Love Just it. Don't get that communication. That's big, though. Two free throw misses there. Chance for Oklahoma State to add to this lead. Yeah, and they're back in the zone. Oklahoma State is not given a steady diet defensively. They keep switching things up for, for Texas. Ramey, little turnaround. Donovan Williams is there, gets his defender in the air, and finishes. Horns take the lead back. Anderson getting past Kai Jones and finishing. Boy, Anderson has been a bright spot. Oh, the finish by Donovan Williams. Good timing there as the defender was flying his way. Boy, Anderson. Texas is doing such a good job with guys who are coming off the bench, such as Williams. And a nice drop there by N.A. Moncrief, the freshman. Yeah, they can't get in a situation, though, Texas, where they're just exchanging baskets. Oklahoma State looks like they're coming in here to, to take a win. They have not backed down in spite of Cade's struggle. It's a very different team from the group that came here late last season and ended the Texas five-game winning streak. As we talked a lot about it, that five-game winning streak altering the course and trajectory of last season. But it was Oklahoma State that knocked him off before the start of that Big 12 tournament. It started but never finished. Yeah, and I want to get into that. that. A lot of that was about their maturity. Those guys had a lot of continuity because of their age. Guys like McGriff and Waters and Gisago up way up. Ramey working on Cunningham, 10 on the shot clock, There's still plenty of time. Williams will pull the trigger from deep, missed everything. Oklahoma State, the 28-27 lead. And it's Avery Anderson helping lead the way, the folks. As a researcher and college professor, he became one of the nation's leading experts in the field of electrochemistry. In 1998, he returned to Austin to become UT's 27th president. Delivering more than 400 speeches, he led one of the largest capital campaigns in the school's history. 
and created the Commission of 125, which developed the roadmap for the future of the university. Universities continue because knowledge is power. Larry Faulkner, he's a Longhorn legend. wild one he's a very happy baby for sure so when we got the news that it was cancer we were so scared you're afraid you don't know what to think you've never been through this as soon as we walked through the doors we were just greeted with the sense of reassurance we're no longer afraid we have a team behind us that's going to take care of him if anyone is going through this process this is the place to be get the care you need at getdellchildrenscare.com Watching the stars here in Austin, Texas, Kay Cunningham and Greg Brown, who are both struggling from the field, but respectively, they're, if you want to call them supporting cats, around them have stepped up in a big way and made up for some of the void that these two young freshmen are having here early in this game, in this Big 12 game. And according to the NBA drop big board by ESPN. Cunningham, Brown, and Jones are all the top prospects in the Big 12 this season, and they're on display here. Yeah, of course, there's a lot of growth for some of the guys on this list. Yeah, and sorry to cut you off there, Lowell, yeah. but uh, the, the, uh, no, let's keep that in mind. That's the aggregate board. I guarantee you that NBA teams individually, that board looks different. Possibly with the exception of Cunningham. NBA on NBA there as Cunningham finishes against Kai Jones. And Cunningham now with seven points. I've watched this young man a lot on tape. He loves going right. If I'm Texas, I'm going to try to push him to the left side of the floor. He can use his left hand, but he wants to dribble to the right side. Hey, but Avery Anderson is having himself a game. You talk about the supporting cast. We see Cunningham making this finish, but you got to give it up for Anderson right there, drawing the charge. He's been a spark plug making his first start of the season. Yeah, and this supporting cast, if you want to call him that, a Avery Anderson, Walker, the, the Boone, the, these guys are really good and embrace their roles for OSU. Fourth offensive foul against Texas. And here's Anderson working on Jones. We got four out and none in. Keep the floor open. Nice fake by Cunningham. And looked like Sims took that over the cylinder. No call. A little Euro basketball. And quickly back into the hands of Anderson. Here come the Pokes. Cunningham tried to one-hand pass. He gets back out to Likely. Anderson, the look off. No. Boone, yes. Caleb Boone cleaning up inside. Well, since the run, OSU has come with waves of aggression and attacking the boards. That was just a man rebound. Kai Jones misses the wide open three. The push to Cunningham. He falls over. Tried to save it. Ends up with Jericho Sims in his possession. 
Under a minute left to play here in the first half. This time Jones gives up the three. Andrew Jones, the leading scorer for the Longhorns with 10. Make that 12. And a nice finish by A.J. Warren. A.J. Warren has gotten more comfortable the more the season has gone on. Today, you're seeing the full arsenal of what he can give this Texas ball club, particularly on the offensive end. There's Bryce Williams. Trying to scoop it past Kai Jones and another excellent finish in some words for Bryce Williams, a senior leader to the young pup Kai Jones. A lot of action in the paint, a lot of high difficulty finishes. And this is Bryce Williams. Up and in. He finished his degree in only two years and went into medicine as a kidney specialist. Then, in 1965, while researching the effects of dehydration on football players, he mixed together a batch of the first beverage designed specifically for athletes. Turns out, he discovered a winner. The formula he created would become the world's most popular sports drink. A physician, a scientist, and the inventor of Gatorade, Robert Cade. He's a Longhorn legend. Kate Cunningham brings the hype. We've talked about Avery Anderson, now Lance Blinks, Bryce Williams also making an impact. Yeah, he's got seven points. He's bringing the substance, and he's a two-way player, but it goes without saying almost that these older guys like a Bryce Williams who have a level of maturity and a poise and a calm bring a lot to a roster with so many young guys like OSU. He's been one of the keys to keeping or helping OSU keep this lead here early. Who's going to get that final shot? Texas will try to chip into this five-point lead before they go to the break. Coleman, 4-3. Coleman off the mark. A final heave. And Oklahoma State will be content to take a 34-29 lead into the break. Andrew Jones leading the way for the Longhorns with 12 points. Kate Cunningham has seven, but really did. OSU came out, and they switched it up a bit, but played a lot of zone, and I think that's what was there. But it's okay if you're Texas, one, to get out in the open floor and attack that way, and also run some man offense, even if the team's playing zone. Just because the team's playing zone, you don't have to just sit out and park yourself behind the arc. Right. So I know this is the Big 12 opener for Texas, but this feels like a critical second half of basketball unfolding right now for this Texas team. Yeah, I think this sets the tone for Texas. This will be their first in-conference big test to start the season. No good on two outside shots there for Oklahoma State. Andrew Jones leading the way for the Longhorns with 12. Greg Brown has two fouls, brought Cunningham with three fouls. Good find to Jericho Sims, throwing it down. Up the feed from Matt Coleman. Texas needs that young man. They need Sims to come out of whatever kind of funk he is in. He adds a whole nother dimension. We see Jones has got it going. They get Sims going. This Texas team is totally different at every single position. Sims averaged. Nearly 10 points per game a season ago, and that was his first bucket of this game. So now Oklahoma State opens up. They're not attacking. They're going with the outside shot. And if you're Texas, you'll take it. You'll live with yep. whatever OSU does from beyond the arc. They're only shooting about 30% coming into the game. Stay hot, Andrew Jones, 14 points. That athleticism is back, and you see the swagger is back as well. I talked to you about this at halftime, Lowell. To me, it's been kind of like a boxer you won't let get a rhythm, and that's what OSU has been doing to Texas. When they got the big run, there was a big timeout, and then there was a stoppage of play and the watching of video, and I think that stoppage has helped OSU in that Texas has not been able to find a rhythm. Ramey gets a hand up against Cunningham. Sims with the rebound. Yeah, and these shots show up as passive. And is the way I see it for OSU. They were a lot more aggressive to start the game in helping Cunningham offensively. Well, Sims goes down awkwardly in that tough spot there at the scores table. He got the plexiglass up. And fortunately, Sims avoids all of that. 
without consequence. Yeah, and sometimes these kind of little plays set the tone for the level of aggression and passion and what a coach is looking for. And you don't get a lot there, but it can show up in terms of how aggressive the team is. I like seeing Sims go for a save ball in that instance. Chaka Smart has spent a lot of time talking to this team about the way they start the second half. That's a good finish inside by Boone. As Keelan Boone yeah, and puts it's as, it down. It's simple as that. You get, you see two missed threes, and then you see the easy finish around the basket. That's been the game for OSU. Anytime they've gotten in the paint, it's where most of their damage has been done. Ramey in the trees. The push to Boone for three. No good. I mean, OSU, 26 of the 34 points in the first half came from inside the paint. Can't imagine you'd want threes at this point. Coleman now starting to heat up. He has not shot the ball as much, not shot it as well recently at the beginning of the season. And that's his first bucket from outside. If you're Texas, you literally don't have to run out and close on shooters for OSU. You've got to make them earn it in terms of you closing out. Contrarily, Texas is a lot different. This young man here can knock it down from beyond the, beyond the arc. Coleman has been very good from there. Coming into the game, shooting 39% from beyond three. His best season thus far in terms of leadership, distributorship of the ball. That work, distributorship. It works for me. I know okay. what you're talking you about. know what I mean. That's Likely bodies him off and puts it over Matt Coleman. I mean... And scoring the ball as well. I mean, he was the primary scorer at the beginning of the season, leaving it up for Greg Brown to put down. Texas really gets a lot of energy off of big plays. Earmark that play because OSU does not want to let this Texas team gain rhythm because they're a much different team when they can play in the open floor and get big finishes and throwing more lobs than they ever had in the past. Well, there are an element of five slammer Texas, if you will, because these young fellas love to fly. Oh, we got a game here, tied at 38. From the moment she graduated from UT, no project was too bold for this ambitious designer. At age 30, she won the interior design contract for the largest hotel in Dallas. Soon, her talents were in demand, and as she spent the past three decades conceiving interiors for palaces, resorts, and casinos around the world, another bold project found her, providing a whole community of South African children the health care and education they need. Trisha Wilson, she's a Longhorn legend. All right, all right, all right. So if you're in the back, you're gonna get your stuff. You're gonna come down. All these little empty seats, we're gonna move in and fill them. And the class is called Game Plan for Winning at Life. Here we go. It'll make you feel better. Human connection. He really solidifies the core values and the, the core characteristics that successful people have. He's the type of guy, when you meet with him or you're in this class or whatever, you just know that he has your best interest in mind, so it makes you want to listen. As you're kind of charting your way through UT, you kind of think about this in the back of your heads, both athletes and non-athletes kind of what kind of system we, we've created. We set it up in such a way where half of the students are athletes, half are non-athletes. We're trying to break down that barrier that oftentimes exists on a lot of campuses where athletes and non-athletes don't really get a chance to form meaningful relationships. He really reaches out to younger students and athletes at the university because he truly does care about helping out the younger generation to help them be successful. My sole mission is to build empathetic leaders. I want the students in my class to walk away with an appreciation for taking risks. And I want them to feel more emboldened to take chances. I have an opportunity to give back to a place that gave a lot to me at a very formative time in my life. So, so to be back on the 40 acres working with young people is rewarding. My baby wants Bevo for Christmas. She wants nothing less, nothing more. My baby wants Bevo for Christmas. 
All wrapped in a bow that's burned on Welcome back to the Irwin Center where we got two hungry Big 12 teams, one of which is OSU getting it done in the paint. They can't make a shot from beyond the arc, but if they get it in that paint, count it, it's bucket. They got it done in the first half, getting it done in the second half, around the basket. That's been the story for OSU when it comes to scoring the basketball, low. Just one of 10 from outside, 16 of 36 overall, so you can do the math. They've been much, much more efficient. And it's not mid-range shots. It's either the three-point shot or dunks and layups. Here's the big body of Likely. Kick out to Anderson, who's been fantastic. Cannot connect there. And there's going to be a foul on Kai Jones. Yeah, and you saw, speaking of Jones, Andrew Jones with his clothes out there. Leaves on Anderson. He closed out short. And that's something that coaches teach. You know, sometimes you, you can't just play, quote, unquote, fundamentals. You've got to play the player in terms of what his abilities are. Moncrief had great position inside. And the rebound put back by Boom. And a flex after that from Keelan. Yeah, and it just looks like to me a little bit more want to for OSU when it's in the paint. They're out physically Texas. Texas has to have a little more physicality around the basket, and they have the players to do it. Oklahoma State had the third longest active winning streak in America. Snapped midweek against TCU, a 10-game winning streak dating back to last season. They actually did get to play in the Big 12 tournament. And a shot clock violation did not get it to Andrew Jones in time. And that's an example of what I was talking about earlier, where you can still attack and run man-to-man -man plays even when the team is in a zone. I think this zone, what it's done more than anything in Texas's case, is it lulls them to sleep, lull. It, it takes their aggression away. They get passive and look for three-point shots. Uh, likely just attacking and got great position easily there on Courtney Ramey. It's back to a four-point lead for Oklahoma State. I'd bring help. And I'd bring you can bring help anytime those guys, namely like like likely, get the ball around the basket. You have to treat him like a big. He can play like a post player around the basket. He's so big and strong. He's excellent at finishing. Coleman for three. A deep one at that. Distance. It doesn't matter to Matt Coleman. One point game. Not a tough way to live. The right guy you want shooting it, but that's a tough way to live if you're Texas having to make threes all night. Anderson passes it up inside the paint. Of course, Moncrief rejected by Kai Jones. Cunningham will try to save it. Andrew Jones picks it off, but it's out of bounds, and it will go back to Oklahoma State. Yeah, this is an execution and a big possession here with only a one-point game because you only got six seconds on the shot clock. Texas struggling here of late to keep OSU from around the basket. If I'm Texas, I space guys and try to force the jump shot. Four on the shot clock. More urgency needed by Oklahoma State. They don't realize the clock situation. I don't think they ever looked up and recognized there was six on the clock. Yeah, the freshman, I, I got to put that on Cade and or the coaches have to orient the team to that situation. There was a blow by right there by Jones, but it was too much time. You, from where that ball was, when you initiated the inbound pass, the offense should have started right then. Coleman, great job setting that off to free up Greg Brown for three. Brown's going to get the credit with that shot, but Coleman entirely orchestrated that. Cowboys trying to respond with some muscle. Moncrief cannot convert. Well, the first stop in a long time by Texas under the basket. Brown is heating up and high-stepping, looking like his dad. 
playing that safety spot for Texas football back in the day, showing the vert as well, and it's a nine-zip run for the Longhorns. Well, the young fella, you got to find him early. He loves to get it up. He knocks one, and he high steps to the timeout. Boy, is he high. By the time he left UT, he was already a revolutionary computer game developer. His success in gaming earned him a fortune, allowing him to purchase a ticket on a Russian spacecraft. In 2008, inspired by his astronaut father, he became one of the few private citizens to orbit the Earth and the first second-generation space traveler. Anyone who really sets their mind on it will be able to uh, live and work and play in space in the not terribly distant future. A pioneer in gaming, in business, and in space, Richard Garriott. He's a Longhorn legend. The Freshman Research Initiative is the first and largest program of its kind, getting undergraduates into research opportunities at a university at scale. The FRI program is a way to get freshmen involved in research that they wouldn't technically be involved in until their later years in college. Sometimes when you learn about things in class, it's very theoretical. Being able to do my own chemical reactions, I get to apply what I've learned into an actual lab setting. FRI nurtures future scientists. As a freshman, you don't get very many opportunities to work with professors. They taught me all these skills that I've taken to like other labs that I'm working in now. One of my projects involved working with a human protein that is involved in respiratory illnesses and the further investigation of my research could lead to the development of a vaccine one day. I'm in the computational materials program. Right now we're using up a lot of our fossil fuels and eventually we're going to run out one day. So that's why we're looking into alternative energy sources. We're learning all of the concepts now so we can further implement this and think about it in a different, fresh way to hopefully discover something new that will change the research world. These students are future scientists, researchers, doctors. They're doing amazing things. The program changes the world by changing all of the students that are in the program. You know Greg Brown was trying to make a statement here this afternoon. He heard the talk about Kate Cunningham, number one recruit in America, potential top draft pick. Wait, don't forget about me. Threw it down early over Cunningham. Had some difficulty from the get-go outside. But Lance, now those three-point shots are falling. He's got the three goggles. He's got the high steps. He's looking the part for Texas. Yeah, and you know his best skill as I've watched this young man here in these early games this season, Lowell, is that he does not relent in spite of what's happened before. And he's going to keep attacking. He's showing and proving that when he's able to make shots as he's shown here today, he's almost impossible at this level to guard. And the reason is because he's so big and strong, particularly when he gets to driving, puts the ball on the floor and around the basket. He's doubled his scoring from a season average in his last two games. And such a different comparison. His role on this lineup compared to Cunningham at Oklahoma State as Kai Jones takes it away. Gray Brown gets to come along and fit in. Cunningham has to be the guy for Oklahoma State. Yeah, it's, just, it's hard to compare him because the roles are totally different. Not only does he have to be the guy, I mean, he's a, he's a point guard. Oh, and a good wrestling job there by Caleb Boone. <laughs> And he did. He, he wrestled it into a jump ball on Kai Jones. Possession arrow is with Texas, however. Yeah, the OSU coaches have to be excited about Caleb today. He's been impressive both in finishing around the basket, but also accepting the challenge of these Texas bigs. Jones keeps it alive to Brown. Brown driving, and he's fouled. Goes down hard. Likely. That's going to call for that foul. And that is a perfect example of what I mean about aggressive. I mean, he had a smaller likely on him, possibly as strong as he is, but yeah. likely doesn't have the length he does. And he went and tried to manufacture something really that wasn't there, and he created a foul for himself or drew a foul and got to the line. Hits the first. And this is a critical moment in the game for Oklahoma State. This is the moment where they've had the lead. They've played like the team, the aggressor. 
up until this point. Now Texas is on their run, and they're starting to play with that aggressiveness, and it's now a seven-point deficit for Mike Boynton and his team. Yeah, I thought the thing that helped Oklahoma State was the stoppage in play, which didn't allow the rhythm that Texas likes to play with, or most teams like to play with. And this is probably the time when Boynton talks about Cunningham deferring. This is when Oklahoma State needs him to try to take over a game and find himself some buckets. Bowman staying with him. Here comes the double team. He's got to defer out of that. Anderson's in trouble. Five on the shot clock. Here's Cunningham. A good feed to Boone, but that's going to be a travel on Caleb Boone. Good defensive possession there for Texas. Cunningham never got breathing room. Cunningham did a nice job of finding a teammate, but they couldn't get it done. Texas locking down on OSU. How can you describe Whataburger's honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich at Whataburger. Oh, my Mom, I'm finished. We pray each day. May you come home and be more? okay. For now, we wait for you, for you to come. <gasps> My smile was something I didn't use very often because I was embarrassed. I had a very large gap in my teeth. Smile Direct Club is life-changing. I feel more open showing the world who I am. Every day, we're told, stay apart. But what if that's only a part of the story? What if the whole story is to stay a part of Hill Country? Stay a part of the game. Stay a part of the Longhorns. Stay a part of Austin. Whatever you're a part of, stay that way. Longhorn Network, hook em. Why is Cade Cunningham having difficulty against this Texas defense? Everybody in the gym knows that OSU needs a bucket. They know where it's going to come from. And then watch, he's got three jerseys there. Now he's got two. He does a good job. He's going to take the defense and move it out. But he's got to have help when he throws it back over here. You got to score that. But well, Bryce Williams goes right into the teeth of the defense. Texas is swarming, so there's no play to be made. Cade needs help if they're going to get it done. This Texas team is too good defensively. That's Donovan Williams, and it's a 51-42 lead, a 13-zip run. Oklahoma State needs an answer, and they need it now. Here's Cunningham to the paint, blocked by Brown. Brown is winning this head-to-head -head matchup. Here's Donovan Williams turning the corner to Kai Jones. No, but a whistle as Caleb Boone went up to try to swap that one. That was a nice challenge by Boone, but how about Williams 
and the presence that he's bought, brought. A nice block. This is this is a lot for Teddy. You have to drive into those that many people. He also doesn't have quite the strength or length when it comes to Brown. Brown has really met the challenge. He's dunked over him. Teammate. He blocked him. Playing with a fire and a passion. Yeah, and this it's is impossible to ignore. These are these are money games. These impact. Like literally, it, it, liter no, I, I, yeah, that, that was not. <laughs> that was literally what I mean. It, this is this will impact checks uh, where these guys end up in terms of a draft board next season. Has Brown shown you anything that you didn't know was there in this performance? Yeah, he has shown. What he's shown me is an ability to step up to the moment. This is a big time game uh, with a lot of talent on the floor, NBA talent. So you want to see how a guy is going to respond low to this kind of environment. Sometimes guys shrink mm -hmm. and sometimes guys are gamer. And if you hear me say this a lot. That's a skill. That's a skill. That is a skill. You know, some people are great when there's no one in the gym. And some people, if you play a national anthem, and you put cheerleaders in and you put an announcer and put you in the booth, they literally shrink. And Brown is not one of those guys. So certainly, I've learned a lot, and so has Texas fans, in terms of Greg Brown and what he can do. They are feeling good after Andrew Jones got that friendly roll. So one team is now starting to really rise to the occasion, and it is the team in white and burnt orange. Yeah, and one of the reasons is that young man right there, Jones, was able to keep Texas in the game. He found himself and picked up where things left off last season. I thought Jones, and this is real, I thought Jones would be the guy for Texas this year because he had gotten to a point where he was really, really, really excited about scoring the ball and really wanted to score for himself, almost to a point where he was selfish. And then I saw him in practice, and I thought he would be way more poised and comfortable this year, have all of his strength back. But it looks like he's getting back to that point now and picking up where he left off from last season. I would say at this moment, he's still the guy. I mean, with Coleman and Ramey there as well, and then maybe a step behind that is Kai Jones and a Greg Brown? Yeah, I, no, there's no question Jones... Andrew Jones would be the guy that I run things through on a consistent basis. Late game, he's taking the big shot. Yeah, it, late game, yeah. Late Cunningham late game. needed that response. He gets it. Is it too little, too late? Still 10 and a half minutes left in the 10-point Texas lead. Almost a careless turnover there. And those stoppages helped Oklahoma State tremendously in the first half. Will that timeout benefit them here? Donovan Williams goes down, heads up play. He gets the miss. He calls timeout. Well, even with that play, Donovan Williams has been exceptional today. And one of the other reasons this Texas team is so good, Lowell, is they are so deep. Yeah. I mean, on the depth chart, Williams is not a guy you would think you would be talking a lot about. This is a Houston kid. He's extremely long. Nicknamed, they call him Stretch because of his length. But he's been one of the unsung heroes for this Texas ball club. And I guarantee you, not a name that was talked a lot about by OSU coming into this game. But he, too, can get it done. The defensive end is where Coach Smart has really wanted him to step up. And he's been quite impressive today on both ends of the floor. But with Shaq and Smart cutting down the rotation as well, it does send a message. I don't want to say it was entitlement in the past, but guys knew they were going to play, right? Guys down in the rotation still knew they were going to get their shot. Now the message has been sent. You better show me something if you want your opportunity. Yeah. Jones off the inbound. It's short. We saw on that play, Rondell Walker went down awkwardly, was holding his elbow, and he's now on the Oklahoma State bench. Coleman keeps it alive. Kai Jones almost got it to go down. 
stretches there. The follow, no. And a foul on Oklahoma State, and this is not good as Greg Brown is favoring his ankle. He's going to retie the shoe. Hopefully, that's all it is. Boy, how about the way Williams led that break? He threw the path to Jones, who missed the alley oop, and then followed it up and got the missed shot. And it just turns out it was shoe near that good old double knot. And he's good to go. He's limping a little bit, but not selling it, not favoring it. You know, I remember one of the earliest messages from Shaka Smart in the Texas practice was how to appropriately tie your shoe. And stop practice to teach guys because it was about attention to details and there were too many shoes flying off during practice, slowing things down. Cunningham on Brown, five on the shot clock. Does Coleman recognize? Two on the clock. Does he get it off? He does. No good. Brown with the follow and good. Greg Brown has tied his career high with 18 points just getting started. And if I'm scouting this game, I write in my notes durability. Because Greg Brown just did something to his shoe or foot. It looked like he was slightly injured, comes yeah. back and makes a big time play and shakes off whatever happened to him physically. Great point. Ramey is there and gets the deflection. And just a great job there by senior guard and Coleman to get it up on the rim and then a crash. And Texas is like OSU in that both teams, you got to find bodies because Texas is so long and athletic. On the other hand, OSU is so aggressive. Now he's, Brown is favoring that ankle as he comes to the bench, but I love your point, right? Because when you're an NBA talent evaluator, you were looking at everything. If we knew he was hurt there, we knew he yep. tweaked something, but to him, to see him like defiantly tie that shoe makes a statement as there is a statement. Is it off in time? Avery Anderson's looking for the bucket. And let's see. Yeah, it looked like it was off in time, but more importantly for Texas, Ham was just a step slow. It was almost like he was on a mental tape delay. He saw the guard coming down the lane in, late, in Avery. So he hesitated. The, hesitated. the hesitation is what created the opportunity. Ham has called for a foul on this play. You Here's see that? Anderson driving. That's close. That's really close. Yeah, and if you look at that again, just before that, Ham should be out. He had a chance to get out. Avery does exactly what you're supposed to do, take it all the way to the rim. I see a red light. Yeah. And that angle doesn't help because you can't see the shot clock above it. But you can see the contact from Ham. Well, and then the other question is, aside from it leaving, when did the contact happen? Uh -huh. did, the, did the hit happen before or after the shot clock ran out? We saw Greg Brown getting checked out. He's back up. He's good. He's, he's walking around. Getting high fives from teammates. They recognize toughness he showed on that sequence and you know, I talked about it a couple of times earlier but here's another example of play stoppage I think this bodes well for Oklahoma State because the momentum was in Texas's favor in terms of rhythm and now you have a couple of minutes stoppage so I believe we're saying two shots here so the bucket did not count but Anderson will go to the line for his two free throws so instead of the and one two free throws here for Avery Anderson had a really good first half has been quiet in the second half but that supporting cast that's been the story here for Oklahoma State brilliant in the first half quiet in the second Anderson's role has expanded. He's really stepped up and made his mark again on both ends of the floor for OSU. We got Coleman, Ramey, Williams, Ham, and Cunningham on the court for Texas. 
Here's Ramey. Deep three, no good. Cunningham with the rebound, almost stepped out of bounds. Bryce Williams leading the break. Off the pass there back to Anderson. The lob inside, Cunningham picks it off. Looking like Caden Stearns there. Yeah, and you saw who was on the block, likely. Who I've, I've mentioned it several times. You have to look at him like a big and or guard him like a big. He's posting up in that instance. Yeah, that is such a size mismatch, the way he is built for a guard. And here is likely rejected by Roy's hand. Likely gets it back. Seven on the shot clock. Four on the clock. Anderson, he is from three. Got it to go. What a roll. And that is a huge shot because Oklahoma State now within single digits. It's a huge three. He comes into the game shooting 50% from beyond the arc. He's the one guy who can give it to you consistent, consistently from beyond the arc for OSU, like Kay Cunningham. Royce Ham had the block, but Oklahoma State was able to cap that possession with the bucket. And we got a seven-point game here in Austin, Texas, in the Big 12 opener for the Horns. My baby wants Bevo for Christmas. She wants nothing less, nothing more. My baby wants Bevo for Christmas. All wrapped in a bow that's burned on. Ready Gillette Pro Glide and Pro Glide Gel. Five blades and a pivoting flex ball designed to get virtually every hair on the first stroke while washing away dirt and oil. So you're ready for the day with a clean shave and a clean face. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for cable when it's half the cost for Fubo TV? Get all the channels you want with all the entertainment you love for the price that cable can't beat. Try free. Rub your palms, then the back. Safeguard hand soap with micellar deep cleansing washes away germs and impurities down to the pore, leaving hands hydrated and cleaner than ordinary soaps. Safeguard against germs. Instantly clear everyday congestion with Vicks Sinex Saline Nasal Mist. <laughs> For drug-free relief that works fast. Vicks Sinex. Instantly clear everyday congestion. Young guys at home, you say you want to play at the collegiate level. Well, these guys work hard, especially these Longhorns this year. They're no longer what you could call soft. Look at the way they attack and go after every single ball. And part of that is the coaching staff and what Coach Smart has created here. The other part is also attributed to Coach Smart in terms of the type of guys that he has on this roster. They are relentless, and you know there's a guy behind you who desperately wants those minutes. So every time guys are on the court, Lowell, they're leaving it on the floor, and that's an example right there. Important 740 stretch here for Texas. They're on a start off Big 12 play, 1-0. They were supposed to open up the Big 12 season 
last Sunday in Waco against the Baylor Bears, but because of Baylor's COVID issues, that game has been postponed. They will look to play it at the conclusion of the Big 12 regular season. And a moment ago, we saw Sims there on the bench, and I, I, I talked about it early before the game started in terms of Sims and Boone. Boone has been pretty good and has come alive for SU with eight points, whereas Sims only given 2.3 rebounds, and it's been mostly non-existent. It's been good in helping in, in pick-and-roll situations, not allowing Cade to turn corners. I think he's one of the X factors for Texas as they move deeper in the conference play. Texas with a nine point lead despite the fact that Courtney Ramey is 0 for 6 from the field, has not scored. Here's Cunningham, size mismatch over Coleman. Nice finish there for the number one freshman in America, Kate Cunningham, second leading scorer nationally among all freshmen and it's a seven point game yet again yeah and one of the things that's very difficult to guard in him he can use his left or his right hand around the basket and here comes likely likely will slow it down he's got hand out on the perimeter but will give it up gets it back good defense by hand here's Ramey. he's got andrew jones running with him to jones and Jones cannot finish, but there's a foul on the shot. Well, I thought Ham did a great job of guarding Likely. The only thing is I would have spaced him a little bit further. That's the right matchup for Texas because guards basically have no chance against Likely. Get the ball going the other way. Jones has got to finish that. He knows, but he got hit across the head. If you're likely though, are you saying there was contact on the other end? Or was that clean? Well, you're always saying that, but I thought that was I thought it was good defense, but the thing that stuck out there was the right guy just because he couldn't, he being likely couldn't use that big body, big strong body of his to finish over Ham. Andrew Jones leads all scores now with 19 points. Greg Brown behind him with eight. They have led the charge for Texas. And it's so interesting the way they use Cade. There you see Cade posting up. I mean, they can, you know, you've seen it tonight. He, he can post, catch it in the mid range, catch it at the free throw line, and he can also initiate offense. So Ramey picked up foul number three. And that goes against Royce Ham, and, and Ham now has three. Sims with three, Cunningham with three. And this is Rondell Walker going to the line, another one of the star freshmen for this Oklahoma State team. Now, Cunningham's going after this year, right? We know that. Even when that happens, Oklahoma State is set up for success long term. I mean, Avery Anderson and the Boone Twins, they're only sophomores. And then you've got M.A. Moncrief, Rondell Walker, Donovan Williams, all freshmen, all guys that can be really, really high-end players in the Big 12 with time. Well, and they're showing that today because a lot of guys have stepped up around K, kept them in this game. Nice touch there by Greg Brown. Brown is up to 20 points. Back-to-back double-doubles for Greg Brown. First time in his career he's done that in back-to-back -back games, third on the season. Also had one in the season opener. Anderson loses a handle. Cunningham is there with a the follow and back to single digits. Oklahoma State, they are hanging around, waiting for somebody to spark a charge. Andrew Jones wanted Ramey to shoot that. Direct orders there from Andrew Jones. The feed to Royce Hale. Point blank for number five. Well, and all of this is set up, one, by sharing the ball, but also low by the early threes. You might remember there was a lot of zone being played by OSU. Not so much here in the second half because of Texas's ability to knock down the three ball. 
Cunningham going baseline on Brown. Ramey got a piece of him, no foul called. And Cunningham had a great case for an and one right there, did not get the call. Well, one of the measurements in, at the next level is shoulder whip. And watch Cade use these shoulders to create a little bit of space. You see where Brown ended up on the other side of the lane? That's why he's high up on boards in the NBA. And they called a technical foul on Cade Cunningham. As he was stating his case, I mean, he thought there should have been an and one, and you saw Ramey got his hand on that play. Well, he creates the space with the little shoulder. Brand, Brown got a piece as well. Yeah, I don't know if that, who hit him is, or if he, they hit the ball or not, but he <laughs> certainly made his disappointment. But when you're making a run, technical foul, that's the, these points, these possessions, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's every point in possession is a big deal. There's Cage, brother, there to his left. He came on last year. Cannon Cage. Cunningham. And what Oklahoma State will tell you about Cade Cunningham is beyond the superlatives. I mean, he's a leader. He's not a prima donna. He's a guy that's always the last one at the gym when he's done. He thinks managers are helping them work out. He always tries to pick up his teammates, and they're responding to him. This is his team. Yeah, and part of being a leadership, it, it's not only you and the way you act, but you have to have people that are willing to follow you. And part of the reason, obviously, not only his temperament, but what he brings to the floor in the game. And he has a poise about him. He doesn't seem to get outside of himself in spite of the way things are going on the floor. Coleman hits the first. So that really means it's essentially an empty possession for Oklahoma State. They gave back the points that Cunningham was able to get, and now it's Texas basketball. Great thing about this matchup, we got five minutes left. We are seeing two guys that are starring in this game that will play in the NBA in some capacity one day. And Greg Brown and Kate Cunningham. They could both be very high drop picks. And they're not the only guys in this matchup with NBA potential. Yeah, you you, you beat me to the punch. I see perhaps three, maybe even four guys. And even more than that, that will be playing professionally somewhere around the world. Oh, yeah. Good move by Cunningham. And draws the whistle. And that shows you just how dynamic he is. Now Cunningham back at the point guard position. Second foul on Donovan Williams. And you can see a little spark now, right? Not deferring. Trying to establish his will on this game. If Oklahoma State is going to get back into this, it's probably going to be because Cunningham leads that comeback. Just the third free throw for Cunningham tonight. A guy that will go to the line typically a lot because of that physicality at the spot he plays, the ability to back down and work on those smaller guards. Ham to the bench. Kai Jones checks in. 4.33 left to play. This has been that threshold that Oklahoma State really has not been able to overcome in the second half. Gets to about eight points, and Texas with the answer. That one was lobbed too much, but it's in the hands of Cunningham who steps out. Yeah, they knew what was coming. Very fortunate there for Texas. There's really no lob play to be had. And Cunningham holding his chest. Donovan Williams with the drive, good defense there by Cunningham. Here comes Anderson. Does it take advantage of the numbers? Cunningham wants the three. He's fouled. Greg Brown fouls him on a three-point attempt. A huge play here. So Greg Brown thought he got ball, 
It's called for a foul when we return three shots for Kate Cunningham. College basketball on Longhorn Network is presented by Coors Light. Made to chill. 21 means 21. In 1968, this business school graduate seized the opportunity to open his first motel across the street from the San Antonio World's Fair. It marked the beginning of La Quinta Hotels. I didn't know a damn thing about the motel business, but I think really great sites. I think I really know real estate. He set a standard for entrepreneurism and later philanthropy, establishing a nationally ranked institute on aging at the UT Health Science Center. Sam Barshop, he's a Longhorn legend. My baby wants Bevo for Christmas. She wants nothing less, nothing more. My baby wants Bevo for Christmas. All wrapped in a bow that's burned on. Kate Cunningham for OSU. Survey in this defense for Texas, and I've seen it a million times where great players start to figure things out, not only in the course of a season, but in some cases in the course of a game. Defenses throw different things at you, and then they just start to recognize where the defense is coming from, where their people are, and where they can get buckets. And we're seeing that happen before our eyes with Kay Cunningham. He's figured things out. He's taken 16 shots. The next closest to, to him is seven shots on his team for OSU. And it's just a case of where things have slowed down for him, and he knows where and how to score against this very tough and suffocating Texas defense. Cunningham now up to 20 points, averaging 18 points per game coming in. The number one prospect in college basketball. And goes two of three. Make it a 67-61 game. So if you think about those two technical foul free throws, right? I mean, we're talking about a four-point game right now. But Oklahoma State still within striking distance. Texas protecting the lead. Let's see if they stay with that aggressive approach. Jones for three. Jones got three. Expanding on his season high. Now with 22 points, three of five from outside. Yeah, it's like the zone earlier was a blessing and a curse for OSU because it allowed Texas to find its range. Some of those key guys who shoot from beyond the arc, Texas now are extremely comfortable. They've got to force Texas to pass and put the ball on the floor. Coleman putting the body on the line, a smile there from a man that just drew a charge. And here is Andrew Jones tying his career high. Well, Cade got caught, giving him too much space. And then, of course, Coleman using the feet to get in perfect position to draw the foul. Coleman into the paint. No one was there, and it surprised him. Anderson almost lost it. Here's Cunningham with the moves on Raymond. And just willing his way to the bucket and one. 
yet again for Kate Cunningham. Yeah, in some cases, you, you don't necessarily like to see a player handle the ball that much, but he's so good off the dribble with the ball. He's so sure-handed. He's also sneaky strong. I've seen him multiple times take a hit around the basket and still get it up, give himself a chance for a three-point play. So Bryce Williams checks in. Cunningham has taken over for Oklahoma State here in the second half. After it was the guys like Williams and Avery Anderson, they were the main storyline as the supporting cast played well in the first half. A battle for the basketball. And Texas calls for the timeout. Yeah, Texas got caught on its heels there. Didn't respond well to the pressure by Oklahoma State. Good decision by Oklahoma State to extend the defense. Light trapping and pressure and make you do some things that you aren't comfortable with. Well, this one has been a lot more difficult for Texas as you would expect in the matchups that played so far this season. As the win against San Houston State was the fourth time in seven games that Texas won without ever trailing in the game. But the Big 12 is going to be a dogfight this year. We flash back to an all-time classic back in 2007. DJ Augustine hitting the three. You know, there was also this guy by the name of Kevin Durant that was also <laughs> stellar. Durant got the block and got the flush to take us to a third overtime. What a game. Yep, but Keith Bogan with the shot to win it for Oklahoma State. Jones cannot connect. Six-point game here. He loses the handle. Got it back to Cunningham. Coleman tried to keep it alive, but it's going to stay with the Cowboys. Yeah, nothing that was there. I didn't think for Williams and then Texas on the other end. I got to believe that Coach Smart would have hoped he could have gotten a better look out of that timeout. Jones trying to pick the pocket. Brown touched it. Looks like he touched it, but no. It's off Oklahoma State. And the Longhorns with the basketball. Yeah, I didn't see who it would have hit. For Oklahoma State. Looked like Brown. Oh, okay. Right at the last second there, Cunningham got another piece of it. Yeah. It did initially go off Brown. Under two minutes here. Ramey stays in bounds. Yeah, and Texas can't go into a prevent. They've got to stay aggressive. They want a chance to win this. Offensive foul and a big one at that. Isaac likely going down. Yeah, and Texas has really gotten tripped up with this pressure defense. No need to leave you your feet for that pass actually look like a, a lob and or a shot would have been the better decision checking to see if the feet were on the semicircle look like he got outside got his feet set two players with at least 20 for texas andrew jones with 22 tying a career high greg brown with 20 and for Oklahoma State, Cade Cunningham has come to life trying to take over for the Cowboys in the second half. He leads all scores now with 23 points. Texas really struggled from three-point range in the first half. They shot a lot of threes, missed a lot of threes. Early on in the second half, though, those threes were falling for the Longhorns and started to open up more options for Texas. And they're doing all of this. Six-point lead in the Big 12 opener with Ramey still scoreless on 0 of 6 shooting. And I thought early Ramey did a great job on Cunningham and essentially, and I'm not looking at the scouting report, but obviously that was a big part of his job is to contain that man there, not only early, but late here too, as you see who he's guarding. Texas had a 13-point lead in the second half. 
Oklahoma State was on the wrong end of a collapse as Williams turns the corner. Can't get it to go. Here's Jones. Taken away by Anderson. Numbers for the Cowboys likely inside and one. Here we go. Crunch time and Oklahoma State still in this. In a Moncrief. The freshman from Canada. Yeah, and Moncrief is another part of this supporting cast. It's a great decision there. Throwing it over the top. Stays in the play. Texas will have to play this one to the end if they want to try to come out of here with a win. Got to finish as Ramey fouls out scoreless. So Moncrief, two-time Canadian National Player of the Year. Can't make it a three-point game. 122 left. Moncrief on the defense against Brown. And Moncrief with the foul. And they're starting to chirp a little bit. As you would imagine, in a close game against two teams that know each other well. Even these young guys, a lot of them have played against each other on the AAU scene. Brown and Cunningham have played on the same team as each other. Texas in the bonus going to the line. Yeah, and a lot of this law is about expectation. OSU is not coming in here expecting not to win. Again, Bryce Williams said it after the TCU game. We feel like as good as Texas is, I mean, we, we can beat most anyone in, in conference play, regardless of being home or, or the road. These guys know that every one of these games is extremely important minute left Cunningham dumps it to likely another pass but likely gets it back Anderson behind the back the drive Brown says get out of my kitchen what you like about the latter part of this game is the stars are stepping up huge. How about the help side defense there? On the big fella Brown, showing the many ways he can impact the game. I'm not sure that had a chance to get in, but if nothing else, that was a huge statement with that block. Royce Ham checks in, Donovan Williams to the bench. Greg Brown, the best game of his young career especially when you consider the competition. Now there's eight on the shot clock. A little earlier in the second half, Oklahoma State was not mindful of the shot clock. They had a violation. Andrew Jones tips it into the hands of Cunningham. The deep three, Cunningham, too strong. Brown with the rebound, adding to his double-double numbers. And a foul on Oklahoma State with 37 seconds left. Yeah, and Brown has almost taken over this game without necessarily scoring. Just his impact. I mean, this rebound is almost anyone's. He goes and gets it. And that's the difference going up. Two hands that strong. Hits the front end. Thirty five seconds left for Oklahoma State. Down five. Brown, another rejection. What do they call that? Now they're going to call Best this a goal bucket. Yep. The goaltender. And a big one for Oklahoma State. So a goaltender is the call. Ooh. What do you think? Uh, right call. Uh, close. So Anderson fouls Coleman yeah. with 28 seconds left. 
Or did he grab the net? Regardless, it's a three-point game here. With 28 seconds left, the Iceman, Matt Coleman, going to the line. Got a sub, got a sub for that guy yet? Yeah, Texas will have to make free throws here down the stretch low. 28 seconds is a lot of time with the talent you have on the floor. Oklahoma State looking at an 0-2 start to Big 12 play. Texas would start 1-0. Anderson to the bench. Texas steps out of conference. On Tuesday, December 29th, in their next matchup against Texas A&M Corpus Christi before taking on Kansas. Yeah, so that, that was interesting. I, I just saw Anderson. He tapped Coach Smart. I, I don't know what the message was or he was just being a good sport as he was subbed out of the game. Corner three. Oklahoma State still in it. Bryce Williams, clutch three, two-point game with 21 and a half left. Dangerous pass to Brown, and Brown is fouled immediately. What a shot there by Bryce Williams, favoring the thumb on his left hand, but made the bucket when he needed to. The senior from Tampa, former Ole Miss Rebel, hitting the three. A little lean as well, Lance. Yeah, and... <laughs> A shot that this Oklahoma team and collective have, collectively have not been able to make a lot of. But Williams has been huge for OSU today. Big 12 basketball, it's here, Lance. Yes, it is. I mean, he's been a little bit of a spiritual leader, if, if you will, in terms of his effort and execution at both ends of the floor. Huge shot here for Brown and hits it. So Oklahoma State needs two buckets. Here's Williams. Forcing the three, cannot get it to go. Rebound pulled down by, you guessed it, Greg Brown. And the freshman went into this matchup. He heard the talk on Cade Cunningham. You've called it a money game for someone like Greg Brown. He has made a statement with this performance. Well, you've heard the saying before, the cream rises to the top. That's exactly what Brown did today. He dominated the game late here in the last two or three minutes defensively, rebounding the basketball, and then knocking down these threes with comfort. And that's not to take anything away from Kate Cunningham because he's been the guy in the second half for Oklahoma State. You see the upside, you see the physicality, you see the way he carries himself. But it has been two young guys developing into stars here. Late corner three, hit by Williams. But there's only eight-tenths of a second left. And Williams has saved his best for last. I think they're going to take a look at this. Here's Williams. He does get that foot behind the line. In terms of how much time is left. Looks like they should add a little bit more time to the clock. Thirteen points for Williams mm -hmm. on two or three shooting from three-point range. Yeah, close to his career high of 15. Very fortunate, Texas, not to get called for a foul there. Yeah, if there's a foul on that play, it would have allowed Oklahoma State to miss a free throw, yep. try to get a tip in. But regardless of the amount of time that's on the clock, it's not going to be a lot. So what's the approach here for Oklahoma State if it is eight-tenths or if it is a full second? Well, you've got a foul right away, obviously. And if you're Texas, you're doing everything you can to also get the ball inbounds, which is a yeah. major key. 
in this situation. I've seen crazier things happen at, at both levels, collegiate and the NBA. So a full two seconds on oh. the clock. That's a big change. Advantage Oklahoma State with that change of clock. Two seconds left. Texas does have a timeout. Holding on to a two-point lead in the Big 12 opener for the Horns. And if you're Texas, you do not want to turn it over under the basket. Right to Coleman and immediately fouled with 1.6 left. So if Coleman hits two, Texas is in a great spot. Anything less than that sets up a final heave potentially for Oklahoma State. It's the first three-point game. And Coleman is who made the big shot to win the Maui Classic against North Carolina, so he showed his showing his late game poise. Lightly's got to heave it. A little too much, and Texas holds on, taking down Oklahoma State, 77-74. Two teams.